morning, everyone. I can see uh, a lot of superheroes and heroines at the audience. Good morning. To be honest, um, when Paul first approached me uh, to be the keynote speaker uh, for today, I, I wasn't uh, particularly intrigued by the theme of the conference. Um, this is not what I preach. Uh, this is definitely not what AECOM preaches. Um, we cannot afford to work solo in the organization in today's complex business world. So collaboration is key to business success. It is one of the leadership behaviors that we measure in our annual performance review in AECOM. And it is definitely a core competency we look for in all of our team members. So as opposed to having this image of uh, Superman, you know, having HR in front, I want to impose, uh, impose a different image in your head. Um, have you seen the latest Avengers? No one? Yeah. This is the team of HR Avengers that you need to build in your organization. So I wonder why um, Spider-Man and Batman, they don't join the Avengers? <laughs> So if you have uh, Spider-Man and Batman in your HR team, so tell them to quit working solo and join the Avengers. So joking aside, um, I've seen HR function advanced in this maturity curve in the last decade, particularly in Asia. When you think of it, whether you're designing a product, setting up a new business, establishing new policies, training your operators in a factory, all these impact people. The business world is getting so sophisticated in many, many fronts. Many firms have increased expectation on HR to be more in the forefront in formulating people's strategy in achieving positive business outcomes. In the last decade, I've seen many firms transformed or in the process of transforming their HR function to a more, much, much more robust strategic partnership with the business. More companies now realize the risk or the cost of not partnering with HR closely in the forefront. HR is now recognized and has gotten a seat at the table, at the board level, in many firms. For us in ACOM, transforming HR function has not been an easy journey. It's like taking two steps forward and, two, and three steps back. Each company has its own dynamics, different organization structure, multiple subculture, different business units, they might be at a different point in this business life cycle. Some could be just starting up, some could be um, high growth, some could be maturing or retrenching. There's never a sure win, easy formula for successful transformation. As HR leaders and HR practitioners, we have to be relentless in winning over the hearts of the C-suites. Building up our credibility bit by bit. We have to have the courage to speak our minds. And we need the strength and the resilience to work through issues in different business life cycle, let alone the agility and mental capacity to, apl to apply different strategies in different business condition. I wouldn't say um, HR function at AECOM is there already. We are still in the process of transforming ourselves. Um, I'm not gonna share any rocket scientist um, you know, formula or show win formula to all of you, but what I'm sharing with you, they are real life business situation and experience that we went through. And a lot of them are lessons learned. Many years ago, AECOM penetrated the Malaysia infrastructure uh, sector. 
it was uh, very opportunistic at that time. The project team uh, submitted a bid together with our Singapore uh, project team, and, and they won the project. They won the KBMRT design and consultancy project. The project team quickly went in and hired people left and right, and they didn't really engage HR at the forefront. Um, they just you know, moved people around from other country into Malaysia. And um, then they realized they need some support, so they hire a junior HR administrator to support them. And obviously, you could imagine, uh, we didn't do talent mapping up front, we didn't have uh, benchmarking done, we didn't have salary structure, job hierarchy, none of those. And some of the mobility cases weren't even set up correctly. So plugging in HR at that time was really an afterthought. And we are paying you know, our price. We're, we have big lessons learned. Up till today, we are still fixing some of the issues. As you can imagine, it's very difficult to undone some of the damages. Our business in Malaysia has taken off and they are doing really well. They are now, um, they now has grown from a small office to now to 800 people. But the problem is that the ecosystem, I call it, over in our Malaysia office, it's, it has not been very healthy. So we learn, we learn our lesson, ACOM learned. So now we are exploring opportunities in Myanmar and our business leaders, they now know to plug us in, in the forefront. The um, entity, it's being set up right now, but we are already partnering with our CFO, with our legal counsel to research the regu regulatory environment, labor laws, compliance issues, and we are um, working with our business leaders, our chief marketing officers, in looking at building up our employer brand. We are doing talent mapping right now. We are setting up job hierarchy. We are doing benchmarking right now and salary structure. So all these are done now before the legal entity and the office is set up. So we learn. We learn through our um, painful experience. So to my fellow HR superhero here, superheroine, I know you're all expert in your core function, be it recruitment strategy, talent development, common Ben. If you forget everything I share with you today, I want you to take three gadgets with you. One is know your business. Second is collaborations. And third is lateral thinking. Know your business. It just goes without saying, right? Business acumen is an absolute requirement to be part of HR Avengers. What are your company, what are their products, you know, what are the services that they, they provide, you know, where are the revenue streams, how do they make profit, where are the growth and what are the challenges, how's the geopolitical environment, the regulatory environment, how are they impacting the business, all these you really have to ask and have a deep understanding of. I often seen um, HR professionals uh, being labeled as the touchy-feely type. So I think it's about time we give our HR Avengers a whole new image. We are not just the touchy-feely type. We help the business to drive systematic, logical, data-driven business decision. So let your CIO be your best friend and think from their eyes and see things from their eyes. Are there any CFOs in the audience? No? No CFOs here today? Well, we all know sometimes, you know, they could be very annoying. <laughs> so like it or not, we have to work with them. We have to partner with them very, very closely. So wear your CFO hat and start thinking like one. 
you know, how could you as HR leaders, HR Avengers, help your business driving top line and driving bottom line growth? How about chief marketing officers? Any chief marketing officers here today? No? Yeah, chief marketing officer is from another planet. You know, they are very late day, you know. <laughs> they are a very creative group of people, but you know, they are your closest alliance in, in building your employer brand, in building up your EVP. So let them be your best friend. And again, start thinking like one. My chief counsel is my best buddy. I really work my risk management muscles closely with my chief counsel on a daily basis. Trust me, chief counsel is your confidant. So work very, very closely with them. And again, think like them. So you couldn't really do any of the above if you don't have the mindset of collaboration and lateral thinking. I'm sure you've all heard about this theory. How you behave largely governs by how you think. So you really couldn't cheat yourself if you don't believe in the value of collaboration could bring to your business. You just won't do it. Or if you do it, it's really reluctantly. So believe, believe in the value of collaboration and start behave accordingly. Think lateral. What do I mean by think lateral? People always say we need to think strategically. I don't disagree with that. You know, it's important to think strategically. But I think it's equally important to think laterally. Think not just about yourself or your function, but about how your actions gonna affect other people, affect other functions, affect the business, or vice versa. How your other counterparts, how your finance folks' action affect you or impact you in HR. That's what I mean by think lateral. So that's um, pretty much all I wanted to share with you this morning. Um, like Paul was uh, saying in the introduction, I had um, different experience in different space, and ever since I came over to the dark side of HR, <laughs> my respect for this profession has never ceased to grow. So my hats off to you all, HR heroes and heroine. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Christine. If you'd like to stay there and just see if uh, we have any questions uh, from, from the floor. Um, uh, remember, I said you've got to listen, you can't just sit there, so I uh, have a question over here. Um, if we have a microphone, we'll get that there. Is that Linda over there? Good morning. Um, so remember, think about uh, questions you'd like to put to our speakers, and then um, we'll put them to our speakers. So if we put the microphone on the front row here, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Linda Aurora, an executive coach with Plus Partnership. Christine, thank you very much for that very interesting and insightful presentation. I would like to ask you, as and I have been formerly a finance professional as well, has that helped you to get more credibility with the business, that you've moved from finance, that you really have a fundamental understanding of the business before you moved across to, across to HR? What were the challenges for you in moving across Obviously, from a really hard skill, if I can say, to more of a soft skill. And thirdly, has that enabled you to, if we can say, have a seat at the table? So, you know, are you able to be, for example, on the executive committee of the organization? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. I think uh, you had uh, three questions. Um, does it help me? Um, definitely, it helped me, you know, to have more credibility. But I don't think um, having finance skill is enough, it's adequate to be HR superhero. Um, like Mr. Chang was saying today earlier, um, it's very demanding in, uh, in the business world today. Um, a lot of fundamental core competencies, not only finance, but you know, concept of law, 
uh, on the legal front, risk management, compliance, as well as um, technology. It's a very technology-driven uh, world today. So I think all these really helped me to gain a seat at the table. I'm part of the executive committee for many, many years uh, from the Asia business, now in the Asia Pacific business. So um, it definitely gave me more credibility. I think the key is really um, to start think, you know, think like your CFO, think like your chief marketing officer, and think like your CIO, and um, speak their language. I think today's business world is very complex. You know, everything is interlinked, everything is interrelated. It's no one easy formula to just you know, solve one simple uh, business issue. It has to have a team of professionals in their expert, uh, uh, collecting all the expertise to, to solve business problems. And when we chatted earlier, I think you mentioned that um, even in a progressive company like Acom, this move of HR getting a real seat at the board happened quite recently. In three years, is it, that, that they've been given a serious it's, seat? It's longer than that. In our corporate office in Los Angeles, um, it's probably about eight or nine years ago, um, the board started to realize, how come I don't have a chief HRO in, at the board? You know, there's, there's some problem. So they, they started to plug in our chief HRO uh, you know, as part of the board. So I think company these days, um, they started to realize, like I said, the cost and the risk of not involving HR upfront. You know, HR is being treated you know, as a back office function still in many, many firms. So the transformation journey for us and for many firms has not been easy. It, we really have to be relentless and gain our credibility bit by bit. You know, it, it's really not um, a smooth sailing. It's like, you know, making three step forward and two step back, but we just have to keep moving forward. I, I was going to ask you about that too, um, but I will do that after I throw it open to the floor again. Have we other questions for Christine from the floor? Excuse got, me, got one here. Okay. You want another one? No. My, my middle question wasn't answered, okay, which was really how did you make that transition from finance into HR and what were the challenges there in making that transition? Well, I, uh, for my own personal career journey, I moved from uh, finance into the technology space um, as a first step and then moved into HR. Um, I've worked in different functions pretty much, um, also in marketing and communications. I set up the entire uh, communications team in Asia. Um, it was really an opportunity, the platform that AECOM gave me, to be honest. It's, um, it's, I would say, one of a lifetime opportunity, and I was really thankful for, for this opportunity. And every time I um, take up a new assignment, um, it's very intriguing for me. You know, it's like, uh, you know, looking at it from a fresh, zero ground up, and, um, you know, zero base analysis, uh, building it from, from zero, zero ground up. So it's, it's very, it's a lot of hard work, but I think over time, you know, success builds on success, and you gain your credibility this way. Okay, Let, let's take a question from this lady. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Christine, for a very insightful uh, uh, morning. Um, just questioning one thing. Um, you know, you were mentioning about, you know, how the HR has, uh, has to evolve because of the many business challenges uh, and to know the business. How would you recommend uh, HR pr uh, pr professionals nowadays who may wear many hats and do many different things to be able to adapt to the evolving business challenges and to maybe have a business mindset. Uh, I mean, do they go to business school? What, what do they need to do? How do they gain that kind of uh, mental capability and lateral thinking, as you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Oh, by the way, my name is Kay Lam, Director of Business Development, Dale Carnegie Training. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I think we just have to be uh, proactive. You know, I went to business school, and Obviously, it was very uh, helpful to have such a credential. It was very um, good experience while I was uh, getting my MBA. But that's not enough for me. You know, every day in and day out, every single day, I just have to stand in front of, uh, of my business leaders at all levels. You know, just 
you know, strike a conversation, be proactive. Hey, what's your business challenge? Hey, how's the growth? You know, how's business? And just, you know, you get insight from, you know, different business leaders in different countries, their condition and their challenges that they face. You know, I travel 70% of my time. I, I go to, you know, different offices I, and I meet with business leaders and have dinner, have drinks with them and just understand their challenges. And, you know, I take all these information back to my team and analyze it and say, hey, you know, this business leader in this country, he's facing this challenge. How can we help them? So it's bit by bit, you know, building up our credibility this way. You really have to put yourself up front, you know, get out of your comfort zone and take a little risk there. You know, I'm not, I don't know everything. You know, you're, you're there to, to understand the situation and to provide a solution. I think if you spend a lot of time traveling, that kind of facilitates that because there will be those business dinners, there will be the opportunity to meet new people. You have to be ballsy, like you say, and put yourself out there. Yeah. But what advice would you give to people who are perhaps based in Hong Kong, always in Hong Kong? How, how can they gain that courage when traditionally in a lot of organizations, HR has and still is viewed as a back office function, how do they... What advice would you give them to make that opportunity, to, to get themselves in front of the C-suite and start having those chats and asking questions about the business? Maybe I'll ask a question to the audience. How many of you have, you know, out of your own initiative, call up a business leader? Or, or maybe, hey, call up a, your CIO, your CFO, and hey, you know, do you have time for lunch today? I mean, how many of you have done that? Okay, hands up. <laughs> I'm, I'm counting for you, I think about 15, okay? <laughs> we need to do more of that. I mean, there's no magic to it. It's not rocket scientists. You just have to do it. You just have to believe, you know, these knowledge of the business, it's gonna help you to, to be a better HR superhero or superheroine. So there, there's really no, no magic. Just put yourself out and, you know, take a little risk. You know, all they could say is, no, I'm busy. Just keep calling. You know, stand in front of them. Hey, you know, you have time for lunch today? You know, want to, my treat, take you out for lunch. <laughs> I think that's very good advice, actually. Right? <laughs> Other questions for Christine? I think we've got time for uh, one or two very quick questions. If you don't put your hand up, it's going to be me again. I can't see any over there. Um, so... Uh, I think in terms of um, like trying to get that engagement with, with the C-suite, you mentioned it's important to talk to the CIO, it's important to talk to the CFO. Um, who would you say has, in your experience, has been the most insightful or the most inspirational person to talk to? Obviously, these things you say are built up over time, and it's like chipping away bit by bit. But if I, if I had to try and focus my energies and time and buying lunches um, on one person. Who, who would that be? Who do you think is most influential together with HR? Well, um, I say it's none of the above. <laughs> it's, it's really the, the head of the company, the president. You know, I learned the most from my boss over the years. I mean, even when I was looking after um, IT department. I was tasked with transforming uh, the IT, the technology platform. Uh, people might say, oh, it's just, you know, IT, you know, maybe give, you know, those guys new computers or, you know, give them a new Blackberry, an iPad and, you know, call it a day. But no, it's not just as simple as that. I make the point to go to my boss, my president at the time, to understand the business strategy. You know, where are the growth? You know, what, what, what's our services? What, what are the challenges? So all these information I gain and the knowledge I gain from the business leaders, I, I took it with me and strategized my plan. I mean, even if it's just IT, IT really has a lot to do with a sustainable growth of the business. You really have to believe it. And the, the platform, you know, how you kind of sequence your, your, your event, what to, what to change, what to upgrade, you know, it, it's all, it all has to align with the business strategy. You know, there's no point if I work on um, Singapore, but yet there's really no business there. There's really no growth there. They're not putting effort there. Why am I, as IT, put effort there, right? So um, 
I would say it's really make close alliance with your business leaders and think like your CFO, think like your CIO, and think like your marketing officer and speak their language. Okay, so we better all take a day off in order to make time to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but assuming we can uh, make that time, I think that that's very, very sound advice there from Christine. So uh, thank you very much for sharing this morning, Christine. Thank you for having uh, me. Christine Jones, Senior VP, HR APAC for ACOM. Thank you so much. <laughs>